All right, so in this presentation here, we're going to continue to talk about, um, we're going to really focus on memory and uh, some of the data directives and uh, how that is, is actually laid out in memory to give us a better understanding of what happens. And really because some of, a lot of what we're talking about here, it, it becomes problems in, in your program. If you don't understand, you know, how we define a label, how we define a variable, how that variable is being accessed, um, it can cause you a lot of issues and cause you a lot of unexpected behavior in your program. So we have with um, integers uh, something called signed or unsigned, and with that, what that's simply saying is whether or not a, a value, an integer, can store a signed you know, so is it a negative number um, or an unsigned? It means it's only positive. Um, what happens though with that signing is that we have just the, so when you say that you want to store a signed number, um, what we do then is we get just this first bit becomes the signed bit. And so with a signed number, because that determines the sign, it reduces the total maximum in which that number can, can be represented. All right, we lose a bit. We lose the most significant bit at that. And so whether it's signed or unsigned, we only have these first seven bits in order to determine the actual value. So if all of these were set to 1 and the most significant bit was 1, it would be a negative 127. If all of these bits were set to 1 and the most significant bit was 0, we'd have a positive 127. Right? We'd have 127 regardless. That most significant bit being the signed bit determines whether or not it's positive or negative. Um, if it's unsigned, then it's much different and that now we have all eight bits to represent value. Um, we can go to a much higher maximum because now we have eight bits to store um, our maximum value, but we have no negative. So you have no possibility to store a negative value here. Um, so if we have the most significant bit set, we have a value 255. If it's not set, we have a value of 127, but they're both positive. Uh, there does exist a ones complement, which is just an inversion of all the bits. And so, a one, you know, to store this value here in ones complement, we would just invert the bits. Uh, same thing with here, we would just invert the bits. Um, we run into a lot of issues with ones complement, and uh, I don't think we need to spend any time on that. If you're interested, there's a decent article or entry on Wikipedia. You can just search for that ones complement to get a little bit of background there. Um, we're focusing on the use of two's complement because that's what most computers use in order to store integers and to store those signed numbers. Um, remember the process. So if it's a two's complement, it needs to be stored in two's complement or we determine that it is in storage, stored in two's complement, we invert all the bits and which finds the one's complement. Uh, and then we add one to that number. And uh, we saw in a couple videos previous that this provides us a relatively handy trick and that we can, storing a negative number in two's complement, we can add those numbers together um, to essentially get subtraction through addition, which is pretty neat. Here's a couple examples. Um, I think we've got plenty of chance to go through that, so I'm not gonna spend much time on here. Um, this is an example of a listing Right, and we did that in a previous video where we dumped the, the value. So we looked at an example like this, moving negative 10 into EAX or the value 10 into EAX. And what would those look like? As you know, What are the actual binary, what's the actual bytes that are stored for that program? And if we generate a listing, we can see that here we have the negative 10 and here we have 10. And so if we're looking at the actual instruction, actual data, this would be the, the binary represented in hex. Um, the, this is our opcode, so B8, that represents move EAX, and then these last bytes here are for the value, right? And so F6, F, 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 right? We know that when we store something in two's complement and it is a negative value, all those, you know, you're going to have a lot of Fs because a lot of those bits are going to be, when they're inverted, they're going to be set. Right, so uh, F6, F, 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 negative 10, and then 10, we don't have the two's complement. We don't invert and add one, so we just have zero A. A in hex is 10, and then the rest of those zeros. Now, you may be wondering, well, why is 10 stored here and not here? Um, and that has to do with the Indian this, right? And so um, most systems store uh, the x86 uh, particularly in little Indian. Uh, and that is that we have the least significant bytes first and the most significant last. And we'll talk more about that later on. All right, so um, to come back, as I mentioned, we'd come back to these variables or something very similar to it. What we're doing then is we're essentially defining variables. And what we're ultimately doing is we're telling the operating system to reserve 
Okay, so, so we reserve a byte, a word, a D word, or several D, uh, bytes, reserve memory locations for us in order to store our values. So var a will point to an address. Right? So this points to an address in memory where we can access the value uh, hex a stored in that location. All right, same thing with B, same thing with C. Um, we need to be very, we need to understand the layout then. And so I'm going to try to describe this process here. We'll use a, what I'll consider a block of memory. And uh, for purposes uh, we won't talk about right now, um, memory is typically laid out in, in, there's something called data alignment. And so we typically get memory laid out in um, four byte chunks. And so we'll say that each one of these blocks here in memory represents uh, a byte. And then for addresses, right, because each byte is going to have an address then, we'll start with lower and we'll go to higher. Okay, so I'm going to lay out a couple more rows here just to help with our conversation. All right, so I'll try to make that work. All right, so we define a byte for 0a. So var a points to uh, this first address here, and we define one byte. So if each one of these blocks represents one byte, then we'll store the value 0a here. Okay, the next one is uh, a word, right? So a word is two bytes. So we have two bytes stored for 0b. So there's our first byte, and then here's our second. Right? There's just nothing there because we don't need, um, even though we've allocated the space, we don't have enough to fill all those bytes. Right? But we still allocated it. And so now what, what var a points to is right here, and what var b points to is right here. Right? If we're thinking about this in terms of an address. So if each byte has an address, this is var a, this is var b. Okay? Var c is a d word, so we have four bytes. green. So we have 0c, that's one byte, two byte, three bytes, and now four bytes. And now var c, it points right here. So its its address starts right here. Right? And now we have var d. So what is var d? Well, var d will start at this location. Right here. Right, so here's our address for var d, um, and then it'll consume 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 bytes, storing at each byte one of those ASCII characters. Right, so it'll continue to go, and eventually we'll have the last byte being stored, which is our null byte. Okay. These The memory is laid out sequentially, and so this these addresses, you know, var uh, this var a, var b, var c, var d um, are all laid out sequentially. And so these addresses will flow essentially sequentially. And that this will be address 1. Let's say that this is, you know, this points to address 1. And then this points to address 2. Right? So if this was 1, this is 2, 3. This would be address 4 then. So it points to 4, 5, 6, 7. This would be address 8. And so then hello uh, var d would point to address 8. Right? All right, so that's how it's laid out. Um, where we can run into some issues with this is if we move inappropriate size data. So let's say that we try to move into this first address um, two bytes or four bytes, so a word or a D word. Well, what can end up happening is we can end up stopping over the stuff that was stored at the subsequent locations. And so we have to be very aware. We have to be very cognizant of the, the type, the size of the data that we're moving and and moving around into the different registers and into the different locations. All right, so let's take a look at a sample program. Or actually, that's the same program um, to get a better, hopefully a better understanding of what's going on here. So uh, we've already got the variables declared. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to comment out this dump. Okay, so if you're looking at this file, you may want to uncomment those out if you're going to be, uh, if you want to 
uh, experiment with those a little bit. Uh, I'm going to leave them in there though, so we just have this one file to look at. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to move into EAX bar A, right, and then we'll dump. We'll go ahead and dump regs. Right, and what happens there? Don't want to do GDB at this point in time. Okay, so we moved into EAX var A, right? And we got what we ended up getting is not A as a value. We got this, right? This is an address, and we'll we'll get into more details on how to you know, essentially dereferencing that pointer. Um, how we do it in assembly is to wrap that label, that pointer, that address, or that variable um, into with uh, square brackets, and so now that will move the value that var a points at into EAX. So we'll make that modification, we'll run the program again, and you'll see that we have an A. Right? You'll also notice that there's a bunch of garbage in front of it. And the reason that is, because even though we moved into EAX, you know, var A into EAX, EAX being all 32 bits, what's the size of var A? That's well, a byte. So all we ended up moving into EAX was a single byte. What was left in EAX, what's the rest of these bytes? Well, I don't know. You know, it's from whatever was previous, whatever this register was previously used from. All right, so this is another area where you have to be very careful because um, the, the system, the CPU is very literal, it's very exact. And so um, if you move that in there expecting to use all of EAX in you know, a future instruction, you might run into some problems because that is certainly not the value that's stored there. Okay, now we could continue on, and you could move into EAX bar B and move into EAX uh, bar C. We're just going to focus on those first three variables. All right, we can run those values. We can see, um, oh, I'm sorry, EBX and ECX. So let's use three different registers to do this. All right, so there's A, there's B, and now there's C. Okay, what happened with the registers? Right, well, we've moved a byte, a word, and then a D word. So we moved a byte, then we moved two bytes, 16 bits, and then we moved a D word, which is 32 bits. So because we defined that size differently here, when we declared these variables, we've, we've got, we moved a different amount of data, right? That label, it understands that that label points to um, this, this, these, those addresses as laid out in memory, all 32 bits. Okay, so we can see that. Um, what about, though, what happens if I move into uh, var A, the value 1? Okay. All right, if we look at this uh, maybe not so great looking diagram here, um, if, if A starts here, we can move a byte into that location. Um, if we move more than a byte, what's going to happen? Well, we're going to see that it's going to, let's say that we move two bytes. Well, it'll move one byte here and the second byte here. Well, what points here? Var B. And so now what we're doing is we're overriding or we're, we're stomping out memory locations because we're moving wrong size data. Right? We're moving in, in a space that we only have a byte. This label only points to a byte. Uh, but if we move more than a byte, it's not going to stop us. We're not going to get a compile error. We're not going to get a runtime error. Uh, not yet, anyway. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna overwrite those locations. And so, if we go back then and look at that code, so let's move one into var a, and then we'll dump regs one. That probably won't be a problem. Oh but it is, right? Because we get an operation size not specified. So we look at this file on line 30, and we can see here um, that we have a problem. And so we're trying to move something, uh, a one in this case, which is going to store, it's going to need more bits than a byte, and so we're getting an error, right? It's telling us that the operation size is not permitted. So it's tempting to say, okay, well, fine, um, into var a, uh, let's just type cast that. We can say something like byte, and we get the program to run. 
Okay, and that works. That works okay because now we still have. Um, we moved into var a, and uh, I'm sorry, we needed. and the value of our b here. All right, so we moved into var a, a byte, we essentially typecast it, so we said make that a byte, that makes it a 0, 1, and ebx, there's still no problems. All right, but what if, in order to correct that error, you said something like a word? All right, will that go away? All right, it does, it solves the problem, but now what happened is we moved a larger amount of data into the location that Vari pointed to, and we essentially stomped out the value in EBX. Right? It used to be a B, but because we wrote it with a, a one, which if we looked at a one, um, represented as a word, right? so it'd be um, two bytes, right? so 16 bits, right? it, it, it overwrote the memory here as well as here. Right, so it smashed that or, or overwrote that information. Right, and it only compounds if we continue to define the wrong size. Right, let's say that we did a D word. Right, well now it would write, overwrite, oh, I gotta get rid of that. Let's say that we did a D word. Okay, we'll run our program again. Right, so it would overwrite, uh, so it'd write the value to var a, where var a points, um, but now we're writing four bytes, so one, two, three. It would also overwrite that memory address where var c points to. And so let's point, let's just move ECX into ECX var c, and we'll run that example again, and we'll see that ECX is now gone as well. It used to contain or point to an address that contained the value C, uh, but now it's a zero, right? And so you gotta be careful. I guess that's the whole point of this, these examples here, uh, is that we have to be careful because the way that the memory is laid out, the addresses are sequential, and if we don't, if we're not careful about the size of the data that we're moving around, we can cause issues, right? So um, take a look at that. Uh, spend some time thinking about the address, and uh, hopefully, this, this is starting to make sense in that um, you know we start with uh, you know blocks of, of four bytes essentially and the addresses go from lower to higher and we just move that data in that these labels these variables are just pointing to those locations in memory and that in order to access that data we it's like a pointer and we have to dereference that pointer and, uh, and if we don't handle the data appropriately we don't understand the directive the number of bytes that we're defining here it can cause us issues in how our programs running so um, that's memory layout. Uh, that's the last portion here, and uh, that'll be it for this video. So let me know if you have any questions.